Good morning, my soccer universe, to another AFCON update. Today, Burkina Faso, as this is my go-to general African jersey, at least for this AFCON. I hope for the next AFCON I can wear it because the Burkina Bay are present. Well, yesterday was, were the final matches in groups A and group B, and you know, you have the lettering, why don't you go A, B, C? No, 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 no. We are going at this AFCON. Uh, we had yesterday first group B, then group A. Today we have first group D, then group C, and we finish up then with first group E and then uh, first group F and then group E. Doesn't make sense, not much, except maybe you want to give those teams, especially Egypt, a little bit of a home uh, field advantage. So in Group B, uh, we had the surprising top of the table clash between Madagascar and Nigeria. And at the same time, we had, of course, Burundi against Guinea. Um, very quick on jerseys, Nigeria played in their dark green jerseys against the red Madagascar with white shorts, uh, which actually those jerseys also looked quite nice. And we had Burundi and Guinea. Burundi playing in very similar jerseys to this one, um, green with a little bit of red here, so you could see that. And um, Guinea, of course, played in their um, white jerseys to put some better contrast there, although I think the yellow would have worked just fine. Um, and the first big thing happening in these matchups uh, was actually at the Guinea Burundi game, where there was a red card given um, to Burundi in the 12th minute already to Christophe Ndu Vungira. Um, fortunately, I didn't see uh, any of these games because I was so, I, I really wanted to watch Madagascar and Nigeria. Unfortunately, the zone did not show it for whatever reason. And so I didn't even see that, I didn't see the highlight of Burundi, uh, Guinea. But this was an early red card. However, um, in the other game, almost at the same time, uh, a uh, very bad back pass by Nigeria. Nigeria only played uh, with the second string squad. I mean, they made six changes, seemingly being already qualified. And with all the heat going on, uh, Gernot Rohr wanted to switch things up. But yeah, it already backfired in the 13th minute, where uh, horror back pass to the side where the receiver was not even aware that now um, Lalaina Nomen Janahari uh, is going for it for that one he was completely unaware uh, so Lalaina intercepts that ball and can go around the goalkeeper and puts it 1-0 Madagascar which at this point sets Madagascar in first place uh, of group B um, and Seemingly, this is a big sensation. However, uh, there's not much coming from Nigeria any, anymore. Yes, they control possession, they maybe have even more shots, but Madagascar is playing it very, very smart from all that I could read. Uh, in the other game, in the 25th minute, Yatara, uh, Yatara uh, makes it 1-0 for Guinea, uh, which also sends them on a good path, because that would mean that they have now four points, uh, which also usually means that you're through among the best um, third place teams. So, uh, good thing for them, taking advantage also of the red card. Uh, early in the second half, uh, goals happen almost uh, at the same time. Uh, Guinea gets in the 52nd, the second goal uh, again through Yatara. Um, and then a deflected free kick from Andrea Mat Matsinoro. Uh, of Madagascar makes it 2-0 for Madagascar and Nigeria may try as they might they cannot find the winner and so the sensation happens Madagascar wins this game 2-0 uh, actually quite a clean game there was only one yellow card and the other one Guinea wins 2-0 uh, you know Burundi probably tried a little bit, but for them, uh, they were overmatched. And you know, we already knew that Guinea is actually not that bad of a team. It was actually surprising that they only finished in third place. So Group B then ends with um, Guinea in third with four points, but with a positive goal difference. This uh, would prove vital. We have uh, Nigeria in second place now, and Madagascar wins this group. Uh, the big surprise of the tournament so far. That is 
for certain. What does this mean now uh, is that Nigeria is in second place. They will play the second place team from Group F, so that's probably Cameroon or Ghana, so that's already a big matchup. And also that should Egypt win uh, their group, they will play Egypt in the quarters, whereas Madagascar is playing uh, a third place team. That might work out well for them. And then uh, F1, E2, yeah, there could be a Cameroon, Ghana in there. There could also be a Tunisia or Mali in there. So I already see this upper half of the tree being, uh, at least from the names, a little bit easier but you know Madagascar earned it and they are absolutely sensation of Africa so far. Now in the late games uh, they pitted um, uh, Uganda, I'm getting a little bit confused with all my with all these names uh, sometimes, pleaded, uh, Uganda against Egypt um, where we finally could see Egypt in their away jerseys, where this whole swirly pattern of this Puma template is, which is one that you will probably see a lot on Puma teams, on some lesser Puma teams uh, this season, uh, was um, even more on display than on the red one. Uganda, of, again, in their red and black outfit, which actually looks quite nice. And the other game was Zimbabwe against uh, DRC. Zimbabwe in yellow. I was stunned that the DRC played in white. Uh, it's not a bad jersey and I said uh, the other day that there is the outline of the country. No, there's actually the leopard on there, but we'll do this in the AFCON review. Um, both games, I actually saw a little bit of um, Uganda against Egypt. That's what they were actually showing from what I could tell. Uganda at the beginning was the better team. Egypt was hanging back and not very convincing overall as they haven't be, have been for the entire tournament. However, the uh, action was first happening in the other game uh, where a free kick from the DRC um, is put by the goalkeeper on, on, on the bar. It looked a little bit clumsy, it comes back to Bolingi and he makes it 1-0 for the DRC and Cedric Bakambu in the 34th makes it 2-0. And uh, this lead basically means that DRC is leapfrogging Zimbabwe to uh, go for a th third plus spot with three points, um, which, you know, this is kind of on the bubble and it was down to goal difference because you, uh, the DRC already had a, uh, ahead of this uh, game a not so good goal difference um, with I was zero for it. they they lost twice to nil yes exactly oh my so they lost twice to nil um, basically um, they have to uh, pull themselves out of a hole that Zimbabwe was actually collapsing that much was a little bit surprising because Zimbabwe they were really good showing against Uganda but seemingly their strength was waning uh, in the other game. Um, as I said, Uganda had a little bit more, more of the game, but then Egypt gets a free kick um, at the edge of the box and Salah takes it and puts it into the net. Um, if the ball was jumping, that ball would not have gone in, but you know, this is Egypt. They make the best of their chances. This is the mark of a champion. And it gets even better for Egypt because uh, in the 46th minute, they launch another attack, a quick passing move, uh, like uh, close to center left from uh, on the right, goes out left. Guy takes a, little, a, a few steps, puts a cross in that is missed by two players, but um, El Mohammadi, the captain, takes a shot that takes a wicked deflection, where I think you could make an argument for an own goal there. And it's 2-0 Egypt, uh, which means Egypt seals more or less their top of the table spot. Uh, and Uganda, you know, with the DRC winning, Uganda is safe in their uh, second spot, even with only four points. Uh, not much happening in um, the Egypt-Uganda game uh, there after, I mean, yeah, there were some, some more chances for Uganda, but nothing really big. Uh, Egypt could clearly uh, dominate that game. Uh, but the other game, we get two more goals. Again, Cedric uh, Bakambu gets a penalty after a nice attacking move, but the goalkeeper takes him out. Actually, gets only a yellow card. I think there could have been... Red card, but that would have been too much. And then uh, Brit Asombalonga makes it 4-0 uh, after goalkeeper spills it. And so the DRC actually gets a level goal difference. So if we now look at the table, 
Egypt wins this group emphatically without conceding a goal. Yes, it was not maybe a strong group. They did not play convincing, but you know, 5-0, 9 points. That's good. Uganda now only 3-3, uh, three, three, but with 4 points. The DRC finishes 3rd with 3 points and also 4-4 uh, four, four goal difference, which could prove decisive. Um, it doesn't look bad for them. The result also sees Guinea go through um, because Senegal and Kenya have the head-to-head -head and however this ends, um, Guinea cannot be overtaken by either Kenya or Senegal. Uh, if it ends in, in, in a draw, Kenya would be uh, with four points but uh, having a worse goal difference than Guinea. Uh, and if either one of these win, um, then the third place team has three points. So that puts Guinea in a pretty good spot. Also the DRC with this 4-4 is in a pretty good spot of advancing, but you have to see how groups D, E, F work out. So yeah, we have a total of six, uh, uh, no, seven qualifiers already, but we don't know the slot of Guinea. So if we look now at how the matches uh, stand in the bracket, we have uh, Uganda on top waiting for the second place team from Group C, which is probably Senegal. Um, Morocco potentially in this spot. Uh, it's not quite secure. We already talked about Madagascar. Algeria is fixed in their spot, but uh, that's a slot where um, Guinea could get in, also uh, against Morocco. And then Nigeria and Egypt might be on a collision course depending whether Cameroon or Ghana is in there. Uh, no matchups are set yet, that we'll have to wait for a little. Uh, tonight I think we'll get the first matchups with Group C's and Group D finishing. I actually like it how the AFCON does it this time that they really, we have six groups, so let's finish them in three days and then give the teams all uh, two days, uh, or have the whole tournament rest for two days. I think it makes quite some sense. Uh, overall, maybe stretching it out to have later kickoffs might have helped a few, but again, I like the compactness of it all. Okay, that was a lot to talk and uh, we'll have more coming to uh, tonight. As I said, we'll finish up with um, groups uh, C and D. First D, where the big matchup is between South Africa and Morocco, Namibia, Ivory Coast uh, is also interesting. and then. Uh, head to head for uh, qualifying for a second spot between Kenya and Senegal. Should be Senegal, but what if Kenya puts the upset? Anyway, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos uh, like these. Also, feel free to drop a comment below if you want to say more to what happened yesterday and what's about to happen. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.